So uh, today we are going to take a trip down memory lane and we're going to see something mainly most of you haven't never seen, which is the original drop.org site before it became known as Drupal. It all started like this. Once upon a time, Andres decided, first we are making a slash dot site, something, a web blog that offers all you need to know. That was in 2000 in March. And then started, uh, things started to, started to change. As, as you can see, the complexity and the richness of the code we have been developing for years has evolved a lot over time. In the beginning, at the drop.org time, what was to become Drupal was only about 2,000 lines of PHP. And it had uh, some data, no JavaScript, and just a tiny bit of additional code and not, not even no CSS. And we went to where we are today with half, half a million lines of PHP, 100,000 lines of JS, and all the rest. Just to give you a more accurate idea of the PHP, here's how it evolved version by version. One thing I find interesting uh, when we, uh, I look at this is how the ratio of uh, code size and comments to code has evolved. If you look at the early code, we had about only half the command lines we had as, the, as code lines, and all in a very small number of files. And if you look at Drupal 8, this is very striking because there's almost as much comments as code, and the number of uh, files per line of code has dramatically increased. This is this is the thing Dries posted about uh, recently when he said we are going to have more code, which is in simpler uh, files, smaller files, and with an, uh, an individually simpler structure. Some other points about uh, history: CSS. Maybe uh, the front-end developers about you uh, are going to be surprised, but it only appeared in Drupal 4.7. Until 4.6, there was no CSS in Drupal. Same for JS. It appeared in uh, earlier than CSS, actually, and it increased very fast, maybe even more than PHP itself. So drop.org, the original. When uh, drop.org was created, the block system was already present. Block.org, being a slash dot uh, inspired product, was just basically a header, a list of posts, and a footer. But uh, in addition, it has blocks on, uh, on the side. So how did we think of blocks at the time? They were called boxes. A block is essentially a box which can have a specific uh, look and feel, not only for its color, but also its position. This is in the files. We can, you can still find them in Git. If you go to the very early commits and you extract archives from the commits to get to the earlier, earlier versions which, which are inside it, you will find these decisions. The doc also included at the time examples of what blocks were for latest headlines, older headlines, these are things we still have today. The recent posts, the recent users are still there. There's a current, an issue which has been worked on even yesterday, which still touches this. Of course, now it, it's based on views, but it was already there 13 years ago. Oops. Already in this first version, before the, the software was even called Drupal, there was already the notion of a theme support, meaning uh, blocks and boxes, as they were known, were expected to have a modifiable look and position. And at the time, the two were not separated. They were just properties. Look is one thing, position is another, and both were just settings of the block. Briefly, how did uh, Drupal uh, build its page at the time? The, there was no front controller like, like, as we know it today. And you know, most of you probably know that uh, in, until Drupal 7, we've been using index.php as a front controller, which dispatched then to a menu execute, execute active handler. And then in Drupal 8, we have the kernel. <coughs> At the time, this did not exist. Drop.org was a much more traditional PHP application, which had individual pages, each with all its functions within it. 
For instance, you see there was an index PHP which was the home page at the time. There was a fact PHP which was a list of articles, article.php which listed individual article pages, and so on. At the time, uh, we still did register globals, and there was a dedicated back office which disappeared quite, uh, quite soon. Going to blocks, at the time, blocks had these settings for colors and for look, but they could not be placed by the UI. You had to patch the code at the time to modify how the blocks were going to be placed. The placement was also very limited. You could only place them at the top or the bottom, header and footer. And at the time, there was this young designer called Dries, which uh, some of you probably know, who created the first version of the theme system. And at the time, it was uh, based on class. As you can see, the Dries theme was implemented by the Dries theme class. So uh, originally, on drop.org, uh, we had an object-oriented system. And it worked by invoking, as you see, the theme object and the box method on it, much as you would expect uh, these days. Then, within this, it was much less clean. If you look at the markup we had at the time, you see the uppercase markup. Everything um, uh, as HTML being built from PHP. And uh, in the end, the theme box, login, uh, and these parameters. Another example was how you would implement the theme for uh, the box, the future block. This one is taken for uh, the Natrak theme, which was uh, created by Xartan Mans, another of the early Drupal con contributors. So as you can see, you would have this box method on, the th on your theme object, and you would include the file for its configuration. This is, this is how you, uh, you would configure it at the time, and then just build your HTML in PHP. And sometimes, of course, already at the time, because there, was, uh, there are even earlier versions we didn't make it to the repository, you, you would find a theme box in addition to just the box, and which much the same thing. This was because uh, this was implemented in the, what was called at the time the web board, which was a list of stories, and it used the function form, whereas the other pages, which were in, the, in their individual files, as I just as, uh, explained, would invoke the theme method, already compatibility issues. And it looked like this. This is typically how you would uh, then have a uh, node page, because there was, uh, the, the, these were the article pages at the time. You can see we already have many familiar elements, uh, the, the author with its link, the blocks laid out on the side, and uh, the region of the top and the top and bottom, and the very, very early of, uh, incarnation of the Drupal logo, which would become the duplicate later, except at the time it was black and had no eyes. How did it fare performance-wise at the time? As you can see, it was not that bad. How did I measure this? This is interesting to know, probably. I, I took every version of Drupal, uh, every release of Drupal, and I ported them all to PHP 5.3 and ran them on the exact same machine, this one. So all the timings are taken on the PHP 5.3 on this machine. So you can really compare them to see how you have evolved over time. So at the time, 10 milliseconds per request, which was quite good. But remember, we had only about 2,000 lines of PHP to run and no front controller. And this is the default theme which you would, you, you would get if you took the, the code and tried to go to the home page. Still no, no duplicate on that one. It was the old drop.org logo, which was uh, an image of uh, drops falling into water. And then, speed ahead, here comes Drupal 1. This was uh, nine, mon nine months later. What changed in Drupal 1 besides the name? Well, at, the time, or at this time, all the fundamental concepts we have been using in Drupal since are born. The module system is introduced. The notion of a hook uh, with its magical naming properties uh, uh, is born. And the notion of a white, which we have been using in conjunction with hooks, but not only with them, are born too. At the time, uh, one thing I find interesting is that hooks were not magical like they became later. You had to declare them, as you can see in this example, 
the module object declares that it will implement something called help, something called block, and something called admin. And the hooks are registered in something called the repository, which will later become familiar. If you follow the, the Drupal 7 development, at some point for maybe six months to one year, we tried to keep a track in the registry of uh, function and hook implementations only to drop them at, uh, at some point because this was not efficient. But already at the time, this was introduced as a potential optimization to find hooks. Remember, they were being declared at the time. There were just seven of them. Admin, block, which is the one we are interested in uh, in this history. Cron, export, help, page, and user. Some of them are still there uh, with us today. What were blocks then, uh, as, uh, according to uh, block help? Blocks are boxes, okay, two words for the same thing. As you can see, the, um, it will take some time for the two concepts to, differ be, uh, to be differentiated in Drupal. Blocks could uh, be created by the code. They were exported by the engine, as the documentation says. And in Drupal 1, they can now be placed by the administrator in using a UI. But there's a difference. What the administrator places are called, is considered custom blocks, and you can place them basically in the left or right region. But placement in the header and footer is still controlled by code. White is already used to place them. What is within a block? Again, let's refer to the documentation. Blocks are bits of text, HTML, HTML or PHP, which will be added to existing content. So at this point, we have this notion of a central content and block being extra content being added, uh, being pulled uh, after the code itself. And what uh, is this content made of? It has a subject and a text, exactly like today. But although we have now at this point blocks, and uh, the doc says blocks are boxes. We now have a separate theme function, which is called theme box, in addition to the theme block function. What's going on? Well, there's a, the first uh, start uh, at refactoring the, the page cycle. So, so some pages still have their own page controllers, but a few of the other, of the other ones are, are using the module PHP uh, page, which redirects the calls to invoke individual controllers and actions. So basically, the controller is invoked by the front controller in module PHP. It's, it loads the includes, uh, it takes the configuration from the environment, defines the action functions, and then will check for the parameters to generate the action and invoke them. How is an action built? It receives the data requires the build, and then we invoke a box, box repeatedly to build everything as, as blocks. The block admin UI can lay out the files on the left, center, or right, and the admin, only the administrator can do this. But uh, header and footer are controlled by the theme, not even by the module logic or by core, but by the theme. So it's up to the theme to decide if it wants to include some boxes in the header or footer. Oh, one last thing. At that time, the blocks table, which, locates the, which keeps the settings and the location for the themes, uh, is theme independent, meaning that any theme you would write at this time has to accept play and placement info, which is based on the core theme definitions, because blocks ex always expect to be placed in a region with the same name. And the admin UI looks like this. Gorgeous, isn't it? The block hook uh, is here. And um, it basically, much like, uh, it, like it will look later, except it has additional information. Like today, it must return the subject and the content, but it also returns two inv other information which will be lost uh, later on, which is the information, which, is, which will be called the title in addition to the subject, and a link. The link is the strangest parameter in all this because it is not used anywhere. The block needs to export it, but it is only deployed on the back office and the UI placement, so maybe the admin can see what this is supposed to be for. It does not, never appear on the front end.
Here is a sample implementation. As you can see, the code has already been cleaned up quite a bit over drop.org. There's no HTML basically being built within a block implementation, which defers rendering to uh, ex external functions. Cleanup already split form and function. Themes for blocks or boxes have evolved. They do still build the HTML, but at least now it's separate from the data building. You can see in orange in the middle, I think, the subject and the content are now just variables in PHP which are printed and returned by the box. How did things evolve? Well, Drop Drupal 1 is quite a bit faster than the original Drop.org. Although the code size has almost doubled, it's about 30% faster. It can now render the home page in 6 milliseconds instead of 10. And it looks like this. This is the, the uncounted theme for, um, created by Stephen Wittens, a uh, long time contr early contributor from Drupal, which was then uh, co known as uncounted, and which, uh, who created uh, later the Garland theme. Drupal 2, at the time, the rhythm of versions was much, much faster than today's, is only two months later. Something, uh, some changes uh, have still uh, happened. The box content is now filtered uh, in the controller. Originally, the filtering was done when the data was being extracted without any knowledge of the rendering which would be done upon them. For security reasons already, the filtering moves one step up from the model to the controller. And this is the first place where internationalization comes in. The block subject can now be translated, although the content cannot. There are no, not many changes regarding blocks in Drupal 2. The, uh, the file layout introduces this is the MISC directory where you will find the, the favicon, the, the JavaScript for common. The PHP short tags are abandoned and you can start to see some blue because the drop in uh, the uncount theme has turned blue. One thing too, uh, themes were implemented as uh, inherited from the original uh, theme implementation, and they had a method called abstract, which was at that time not a reserved keyword in PHP, because this was for early PHP versions like PHP 3, and it had to change uh, that version to accommodate for PHP 4. And uh, another place where OOP appears is you can see the content types like story, are now uh, classes inheriting from a base node class. I think, who would have expected at that time uh, to see OOP in Drupal? Who knew this would exist? Yeah, not many, I think. <laughs> the locale table appears, and you have the first update uh, script to, uh, to care for uh, migrations from earlier versions. Changelog and credits appear, and for me this is very interesting because uh, this is how uh, the first mark of the community taking place, Dries uh, taking care to credit people where they, are being, where they need to be credited, so uh, to build on the, the work of the others to show that uh, this is not his work but, but uh, community contribution. Performance-wise, we are still back to 9 milliseconds, which is not as good as it could have been. And you can see the first Droplicon, welcome Droplicon. Drupal 3 takes much longer. It's uh, only at the end of that uh, second year that uh, Drupal 3 sees the day. And now blocks have changed quite a bit. They can be created by modules, and they now have the, the status of being disabled, optional, or required. Previously, they were just there. Uh, you could uh, choose to display them or not, but they were there anyway. You had to change the code to make the, them disappear. And blocks are no longer confused with boxes, but boxes, which are just visual elements from the team without uh, blocks in the uh, actual block content, can also be uh, enabled, disabled. Many changes at the time, new uh, node uh, concept itself uh, uh, evolves. There's the first page cache appearing for anonymous users. The form building functions appear. Until that time, you didn't have any form dedicated building functions. You had to build forms in each page which needed any kind of form. 
And uh, there's a flurry of new themes, Goofy, which we will see, and Jeroen, Yaroon, and uh, the uh, very early incarnation of what uh, will, be will become the Stark theme. I mean, something thing which contains basically no markup, no styling, just to see what's going on. The registration of hooks in a global repository is now replaced by the use of function exists, so we now have the magical naming for hooks. New version of the Druplicon, and the notion of relationships between entities, content pieces at a time, is introduced. Also, HTML markup has changed a lot. There were uh, 74 ele uh, font elements in Drupal uh, 2. There are only 14 left in Drupal 3. The configuration UI has improved, as you can see. It now, now has colors, tables, and a bit of styling. And the interesting thing, I think, to look for is that you have this whole administration menu on the top, which lists the administration for every module installed on the site. Oops. The blocks configuration is no longer part of the administration itself. It's a, within, within a section of the administration uh, region. And it shows all blocks within a, a simple uh, diagram, like the blo block placement page we now have in, uh, since Drupal 7. New Droplicon, new version of the Uncon theme. And these, as you can see, blocks in the center, blocking on the side, but still no blocks in the header and footer. How does the theme for a block look like at the time? You can see the theme inherits the base theme, and it implements the box method, which just uh, drops out of PHP and output HTML. It's still rendered raw from the, uh, by closing PHP and reopening it at the end of the class. The base theme, uh, theme class only includes themes for links, image, and command controls. Performance-wise, we have a problem because we, are from, uh, we go from 9 milliseconds to 14 milliseconds in, with Drupal 3. This is the Goofy theme, which it, uh, with a, its Droplicon on the right. It can also have one on the left. Uh, this is completely table-based at the time. And uh, most of the themes uh, of that epoch are fluid. They take up the full screen, uh, screen width, and they are table-based. The zero end theme, which uh, was at some time visible on Drupal.org. And you can see the themes have settings per user. User can choose the, the preferred theme. This is something which was there early on and which was only removed rather recently in Drupal history. Drupal 4, again, takes longer than Drupal 3. It takes a full year for it to appear. What changes? The block box duality has now been resolved, and the box module is no longer there. The placement uh, is defined by blocks, and it now stores both the region and the white separately. All blocks are configured now by the administrator. And there's a, an interesting feature we didn't make it in later versions. When a block is scheduled to be placed in a region for a given theme, and the, that region does not exist in another theme, there's a fallback mechanism by which the block, uh, which is configured to appear, will still appear in the closest, closest region it can find. This is a safety net which has disappeared since. The visibility of the blocks is now controlled by uh, reg regular expression, uh, which can be defined by the uh, themes and controllers. The content is still provided by the box method instead of the block method. Lots of, lots of changes. I won't uh, list them all because it will take too long. You can find the presentation on the site uh, later on anyway. For me, the, the most interesting thing is that XMLRPC is introduced. Uh, since I'm the maintainer of XMLRPC, this is uh, quite dear to me. And you can find the, the first version of the, um, uh, the database layer abstraction. There's a move from raw My MySQL to uh, using a DB API based on pair DB at the time. And this is how PostgreSQL uh, made it into Drupal. The block admin placement UI is a bit better styled, but not much. And the operations column is introduced, much, li much like what we have uh, later on, and with the new operation controllers for Drupal 8. Another look at the UI. And the node form, well, this was really uh, striking to me. Uh, 
when I saw uh, these improvements in the rendering of the node form with the two column edit to avoid having pages too long. This is an improvement we've seen again in Drupal 8, which was uh, reintroduced in 6 and 7 by the Tao and the Rubik themes, but which had disappeared for most of Drupal 4 and Drupal 5. This is the no another strange thing is that you have now two node forms. This is the, the basic node form which you see with it, which is themed and accessible to contributors. And you have the admin node form for the same node, which doesn't carry the, the theme, possibly to go faster. Performance-wise, uh, this is uh, really uh, dramatic. We've gone from uh, 15, 14 milliseconds to 32. The, the response time has more than doubled. For one, this is the first minor version which was acti acti actually recorded with a tag, and it took uh, f six months. There are some errors in the messages that don't match the dates of the commits. I'm not sure which one is actually correct, but uh, the order mag of magnitude is the same. And there's a big change here regarding performance of blocks, because previously all blocks were always built, whether they were displayed or not. And this was part of the reason why uh, Drupal 4.0 was so slow. And in 4.1, we only build the blocks which are actually enabled. Beyond that, uh, there are new uh, the theme functions introduced. The profile module is introduced. And you can now have a visual UI for, to sort user blocks on per user. That means that every user can choose how uh, he wants the blocks to appear on his pages. I'm not sure this is very really readable, but the red text is just not by me. And it shows that, that the blocks are listed in something which is not uh, understandable by the users. It, it is not the, the order of the, the node and titles. It's actually ordered by module name and delta which doesn't make much sense visually. Here is how the conditional build is being done. I won't go into the detail, but basically you now have a blocks hook which builds a list of blocks, and this is where the ordering is done, and a separate block hook to build the, the, the blocks themselves. Performance-wise, we are back from 34 to 15 milliseconds, which is much better. New minor version, 4.2. Hook block has now two operations, one for the list of blocks and one for the individual block view. The deltas, which were integers, are now allowed to be strings, although no code takes advantage of it. And there's now the notion of a block preview, uh, so that blocks can, the content of blocks which are, can be edited on the site can be previewed. Internationalization also allows to translate anything with the T function. And uh, the box function, which is in charge of uh, render, building the block content, receives content which has been sanitized above. It no longer has to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to be preoccupied with both building the content and sanitizing it. Again, we see the pattern of separating responsibilities so that um, many places in the code only do one thing where they would do several things uh, initially. Basically, as you can see, the, our practice as, as developer is evolving toward more standards, better engineering practice, and so on. The block uh, class in the theme, which is the block method, receives now uh, the region as a parameter, which means that blocks can now choose to have different renderings based on the region in which they are, they are supposed to display. This can be interesting. I don't know if anyone uh, did any use of it, but it, because it can afford blocks to uh, build uh, adaptable renderings depending on the situation. For instance, a block could be rendered as a la large table if it's supposed to be in the, in the footer, and only as a small list of titles if it, it's on the side, for instance, with the same block. Something completely unexpected with the support for a SQL Server. Yeah, Microsoft was supported in 4.2. The front controller is now index PHP, and we now have a, 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 a theme engine, which is extemplate. Uh, the, the use of the, the individual uh, theme methods uh, are, is gone. There's only system module still using uh, a theme arrow uh, method. The others just call the new theme function, which we have been using ever since. Clean URLs are introduced. There's a WYSIWYG at this time.
and the, the back office no longer has its separate page which, uh, without the theme. Blue appears uh, in most themes at this time, and uh, the first CSS fields appears. Indeed, much blue. If it looks a lot like Drupal uh, 4 or 5, yeah, it does. Let's compare implementations of how things uh, were done in 4.2 versus 4.1. You see in 4.1, you, you had this function which took the three parameters, no change in 4.2, and then you would uh, concatenate strings and print in the end. This is better than uh, jumping in and out of PHP as was done in Drupal 3, but it still prints, which means that uh, if there is any output buffering, it has to be done outside, and also that you cannot control whether something which uh, is invoked will modify the output or not. In uh, Drupal 4.2, again, separation of concerns, block only builds the box, I mean, um, prepares the build, but uh, the fact of actually outputting it is controlled by the block method. The X template, which is uh, the first uh, theme based on the X template engine, with the new Drupal uh, word mark, could we say, which uh, looks a lot like the newer versions of the Drupal word mark. Performance-wise, again, we are slowing 22 milliseconds. There were a lot of uh, 4.3.x versions. Apparently, there was an idea of going with three levels of numbering for Drupal versions at the time. There was a 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, and then at some point after 3.2, the 3.x later was never tagged as an actual release, and uh, Drupal moved on to 4.4. It's only four weeks later, there's not much, uh, many things changing. Basically, the ability to have multiple sites within a single database because of database prefixing. Well, an interesting change regarding uh, coding practice is that some controller actions no longer print, but they return. This is a tendency which will uh, evolve over time. Not much, four weeks only again. Performance-wise, this is dramatic. Again, we are back to 15 milliseconds like we were in, in, uh, in 4.1. 4.4, we, we see more delegation, more separation of concerns. The theme blocks functions delegate the listings to the block list functions, which is no longer a theme function, instead of requesting the data itself. It then calls theme block to perform the individual rendering, and the theme box function is, has almost disappeared. It's only there in the function for its template, but it's no use. And finally, someone notices that having a table of blocks without a primary key uh, is maybe bad and maybe something should be done about it. <laughs> because at that time, there, there's no PK on the, uh, the blocks table. <laughs> Lots of other changes, compar uh, considering the, uh, the small amount of time uh, elapsed. The throttle module is introduced to uh, reduce load for heavily working sites. The cached pages no longer load all the code, which is a progress. The locale module starts to cache translations smaller than a given length. The push button theme appears, and all theme functions now return instead of printing. Marvin is introduced with the notion of a sub-theme of the chameleon theme. The Microsoft SQL Server is no longer with us. It only stayed for the duration of 4.3. The goofy theme is also removed. In 4.4, the, the, the theme blocks function which builds the list uh, is uh, built by using a DB query and some quite complex testing. In 4.4, again, there's a separation of the, the concerns. Where the list is built by invoking the block list and then uh, only calling the, the functions. A theme block implementation looks like this. As you can see, you are building a string segment by segment and returning it. Much cleaner than pre previous versions again. The chameleon theme looks like this. It will stay until six, I believe. And performance wise, we are still a bit slower at 20 milliseconds. Six months later, we have Drupal 4.5. There are a number of changes, but nothing of concern for the block system. Uh, 
most notable changes are the fact that the menu system, uh, the new menu system, how it was not at the time, is introduced with the make cache parameter, which the Drupal 5 developers will know. SQL can now handle multiple connections, and Postgres is now used directly from Drupal DB API instead of being based on PerDB. The, the, uh, the theme engines have been refactored, the templates, settings, and screenshots, the X template engine is removed. Uh, the, uh, the, sorry, the X template theme is removed, but the X template engine is the, still the standard. The internationaliz internationalization support is completely based on the UI. Here is the Marvin sub theme of Chameleon. And performance wise, it's a 50% 50, 50 drop. We are at 28 milliseconds on the from the home page. 4.6, which is when I discovered Drupal myself, took six months to build, and it changes the visibility settings on the block system. Previously, our visibility was based on computing regular expressions, and you could uh, decide to have in 4.6 on, match, or accept on, but we could still not build a PHP-based visibility control. Uh, a change also in the visibility uh, of uh, rules is that previously uh, the visibility was calculated uh, without decoding the alias, which meant that you had either to uh, not to use aliases or to, uh, to take into account the, the aliases when choosing on which pages uh, the blocks would appear. In, in 4.6, uh, you now have the canonical path, which makes it, makes it much simpler to decide whether or not to show a block. You can now also filter by node type. A new block value uh, appears on the hook block. You can now configure a block, so it has its own hook for configure to build the form and save to save the configuration. Other changes, uh, UTF-8 is now a standard everywhere. PHP 5 is supported. And the page cache sh shows how effective it is because without the page cache, we are at 90 milliseconds on the home and only 19 with the page cache. Per DB is completely removed at this point, and the admin controller finally disappears. The block configuration is now on a page which can also display blocks itself. And performance wise, we are a bit better at 18 milliseconds. Drupal 4.7 uh, regarding blocks does not change much. It was a big release because, notably, of the form, IP, form API introduction. But blocks are just uh, much the same as in 4.6. I won't delve on the changes, you can see them. Basically, the page cache has this notion of a loose caching. That uh, Free tagging is introduced for taxonomy. Uh, themes are converted to PHP template, which is the new engine and completely replaces X template. PostgreSQL, which would previously use stored procedures, only relies on uh, normal queries at this time. And the queue module is withdrawn. Let's not uh, mistake things. The queue module had nothing to do with the queue. It was a list of content to be moderated, not a queue API like the one we have later. Let's take a look at the, the theme changes, which are supposed to be simpler. As you can see, the uh, themes in XTemplate uh, would just print variables by putting them within braces, if that sounds familiar. <laughs> and in PHP, they are just uh, variables within PHP code. You can create custom blocks in the UI. This is on Marvin. And performance-wise, uh, 4.7 is very good. It's back to 10 milliseconds, much like Drupal 1. Drupal 5 took uh, eight months to build. The only change for blocks is the visibility by role, which is important from an access control standpoint. And uh, you are no longer uh, required to provide a title for the block. By default, it will use the admin title. Many other changes, we have no time to uh, look at them. Just the cache, 50 milliseconds without the cache instead of 92 in 4.6. Seven milliseconds uh, with the normal cache and five milliseconds with the new aggressive cache. The sites directory is introduced. 
and we have this colorful push button theme. The per roll visibility is configured on the, the page of the, the block configuration page like the others. And here is this uh, extraordinary uh, number, five milliseconds for the fully cached home page. Group all six, one year later, introduces the block cache because, because you see Drupal 6 is a big release which had lots of code changes in it. Uh, it became much lower than uh, five, so changes had to be done and the block cache was introduced because the cache, the blocks are places where lots of extra work is done uh, in comparison with the main content of the page. I mean, when you are doing, building a page content, basically you do a main query to list some things or you load an entity or something like that. that this is one, you need of work, one could say. And then most of the blocks will do much the same type of work as the main content. Meaning as you multiply the blocks in the UI, which was uh, quite uh, the fashion at the time, you have a lot of work being done for blocks, maybe much more than the main content of the page itself. So it was important to introduce caching for these blocks to avoid having to rebuild them all the time. The theme block function is now a become a theme a template instead of a function. The other functions don't change, and box template is still uh, present. At last, there's a primary key on the blocks key, a table. Many, many changes, we don't have time to list them. Note that at this time, it is recommended to develop uh, under error reporting, e strict and e all. The block cache, I made uh, this orange square on the, that, uh, on the page, uh, it can be disabled if you have any sort of access control on the site. Disabled or enabled. Oh. There were interesting questions, uh, questions about this caching. The, this page shows how it is, it's implemented. And I had just two questions about it, about it. Why does it work that way? And what's in the CID, the key used for the cache? If you have the time to look at the, the details of this presentation, you should ask these questions to uh, you. They are really in, interesting to, to resolve. There's a lot of documentation regarding the use of the new block cache, but regrettably, it's only in the source code. It didn't make it to the documentation pages on Drupal.org. And as you can see, uh, it explains that user one is excluded from block caching. So if you try to debug something and see if your caching works, you should never log as uh, the user one, of course. And users, uh, developers, I mean, are encouraged to roll their own caching logic in most cases. You have uh, many rules explanations of what to cache and what, no, what, how not to cache, but there's a major advice lacking. I mean, you can cache per role, you can cache per user, per page, and, per, and uh, have a global cache. The problem, uh, and we, you must think of it, because this still applies even on 8 today, if you decide to have a per page, per role, or per user caching, you will just um, have a geometrical growth of the number of cache entries, and you will just bust your cache. So this is uh, why in many cases I've, been, uh, I've had to audit, uh, block, the block cache was not useful because its bin is always full. Because, because people, wa people want to be too, too granular. And in the end, it's less efficient than, than not caching. Four milliseconds, this is the absolute record. And Drupal 7, three years, which we all know uh, these days. The hook block doesn't change much, except it's being renamed. Where we had previously uh, one single hook with parameters, we now have four separate, simpler hooks, which takes less parameters. And again, this is separating missions. So the responsibility of the block hook and, uh, were multiple, and now each hook has its own single responsibility. Many, many properties, we have no time for this. The constants for block caching change name because uh, the, this non-page level caching is used elsewhere in Drupal. The tables change name. And we know that here is the final uh, block preview for seven using Garland. Performance wise, uh, in cache mode, Drupal seven is almost as good as six or press flow. It's still six milliseconds only. And Drupal, at the time, I still expected it to be three years later, but as Dries told us yesterday, it will probably be three and a half or four years, probably. Uh, 
What, well, you know, uh, it's been a lot, uh, a large discussion topic. Drupal uh, 8 is ascetic, composer, doctrine, easier, uh, whatever. And there's also some Drupal code in it. Regarding the hook system, the, it's basically gone for blocks because blocks are not plugins, which means they are classes and the properties, instead of de being defined by an info hook for discovery, are defined by annotations, doctrine annotations on the block classes. Uh, this doesn't change the basic functionality. The info hook becomes the annotation. The uh, hook block view becomes, becomes the build method on the, on the block class. Configure and save all the same are form and submit methods. But there are new properties which were um, spread in various places within the code base and which are now gathered much more cleanly on the block inter interface. This, there's first the access interface, which uh, is generalized from the need to filter by type, by path, by whatever. It's now just a method for access, like, just like you have for uh, any sort of entity. You have a settings uh, hook, which can provide the default configuration settings, much like the option definition in views. And finally, you have validation of the settings configuration, because although you have, you've had uh, form configuration, configuration forms for blocks since uh, Drupal 4 whatever, uh, you didn't have any form of validation on, on this at the time. You had to build your own form level validation. Derivative blocks are a complex concept, I would say. It, it enables to have multiple instances uh, of blocks with, from the same base class. And here is an example of how an a block implementation looks in Drupal 8. As you see, it's a class within a name, so the normal namespace for the pl block plugins within your, your module. It, uh, it, it inherits from the block base. It takes the plugin annotations and it generates translation in order to be able to translate the block uh, content and title. The implementation of block docs just has the methods uh, to implement to provide the content settings and whatever. And here is uh, some data about uh, how the code base evolved in recent releases. As you can see in Drupal 6, the block system was three files. Uh, 600 lines and a tiny bit of JavaScript. In 7, uh, it has tri tripled to almost uh, 118, uh, 1,800 lines, still a tiny bit of JS. And in Drupal 8, it has exploded to 5,000 lines yesterday. And the JavaScript doubled and 400 lines of YAML in core. Just as a comparison point, Drupal 3 completely, complete on its own, without comments, was 5,600 lines. So this means the block system in Drupal 8 will probably be about the same amount of code as Drupal 3. The UI for blocks has very interesting changes because uh, something we, you may have suffered from in Drupal 6 and 7 is uh, very high blocks pages which load, needs to load all the blocks and high, uh, very high memory requirements and takes forever to load because it needs to, to load build everything. This is now no longer present uh, in Drupal 8. This is a very good UX exchange for me because you now have separately per module the lists of blocks and a, a, separate, a simplified configuration form. This looks like this if you have never installed Drupal 8. As you, see, you can see, you have the list of enabled blocks and only these on the main list pa uh, block list page. So you, it means you only need as much memory and CPU as you have chosen to display in what will be your front end pages in the end. And then separately, you have uh, the list of, uh, on which you add new blocks to this list, uh, to this page of used blocks. And you can filter it, as you can see on the right, by the module providing it, or even search within the list of modules, which is a boon for sites with many, many modules, and the list on the left will be filtered by what uh, you have chosen in the search box. And you can still add a custom block by clicking on the blue button on the top, no image, and it will just open a dedicated form for this. This is very good UI exchange from my point of view. Performance-wise, we all know uh, the problems we have with this. Uh, well, the best case I have with the uh, default class loader is 46 milliseconds for a fully cached page. And with the APC class loader, uh, only down to 36, which is not satisfying, I would say. Some more accurate numbers. This is the, the, how the landscape goes version by version. As you can see, we started at 10 milliseconds. We hovered around it uh, in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4.7, uh, 5, 6, 7. 
and other versions have had problems. As you can see, Drupal 8 is a bit slower than 4.0, but it's uh, uh, orders, of uh, orders of magnitude greater, and it's still not much slower than Drupal 4.0. So maybe that's not as dramatic as it may seem to some people. Thank you. Are there any questions? You can uh, take the mic if you have anything to ask about this. Hmm. Well, <laughs> then it's done. Oh, yes. Please. Please go to the microphone so it can be recorded. <laughs> I'm not sure how relevant it is, but what about the reintroduction of uh, the boxes module in Drupal 6? I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said. The, the, the introduction of? Uh, the boxes module in Drupal 6. There was an alternative module called boxes. Oh, I, only I don't know if it's relevant. Okay. If not, don't I worry. only cared about core at this point. I didn't okay, sure. look into the, this module. I don't, I'm not even sure what it did exactly. Okay, sorry. never mind. Uh, uh, one thing I can say about Box versus uh, Block is that uh, there seems to have been much rejoicing at the time uh, Box finally went away in Drupal 7. I know that it, it's probably just a naming yeah. more than the functionality. It's just interesting that a module called Boxes popped yeah, of back up in Drupal 6. Yeah. It's more used with features and stuff like that. Yeah. Thank, oh, thank you. Um, I was at a... Um, um, session uh, yesterday and they showed how contextual links and uh, the new marker was loaded dynamic by JavaScript mm -hmm. so they can cache the HTML uh, and the user will have it in the local storage and only get it if they want it mm -hmm. and I was thinking is it possible for a, that kind of future for the blocks so you just have a place marker with some hash code and you output it and then the user will load the blocks uh, if they don't have it already in the local storage. Yes, that's typically something you, you could do uh, probably using a variation on the auth cache, the auth cache module or using ESI, of course, which is another technique. But basically, if you output markup that way, the problem with this is that you cannot know where you are building the page for an anonymous user, whether the information will be there. So you still have to provide it anyway. Or if you just output the hash marking the block identifier, then some code m must run on each page for all users just to f do further calls to load the cache, in the, the, the information basically from local storage. And uh, that, that Othcash, Othcash does this uh, today, for seven, of course. Yeah, they, they had some caching based on the roles the user have and could make it, but yeah. there are problems when you have yeah. user-specific. Right. Indeed, Othcash, uh, if I remember correctly, does not use local storage, basically. It's just using the n normal browser caching and based on the headers output by the, uh, by the site. Okay. But it could be done. It's an interesting idea. Maybe you should suggest it in the issue queue for Othcache. So uh, a, a comment on performance? Oh, Peter. Yeah. So uh, I think Drupal 8 optimization is just starting now. Yeah. So the performance numbers there should be actually, you know, two or threefold better by release. So I think people shouldn't be disheartened <laughs> by those performance comparisons. It's still really in the middle of uh, finalizing a lot of the optimizations. And so, yeah, the one mentioned, though, in terms of loading contextual links, um, mm -hmm. part of the problem is also, of course, that, that uh, the AJAX system hasn't really been optimized, so those requests are still relatively slow. Uh, so if you have to do many, many requests to build one Drupal page, it's going to be slower. <coughs> so it's a trade-off between what you can cache and how slow uh, rendering the page is. Mm -hmm. um, also, a, a plug, I'm giving a talk on the Drupal 8 plugin system uh, this afternoon, so if you want to hear more about that. Oh. Uh, please come to my talk. <laughs> All hail go and go to uh, see Peter. He's a very interesting speaker most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yes, I introduced this uh, performance uh, notes because I wanted to show we've already been through this. You see, when uh, 40 milliseconds appeared in 4.0, uh, it wasn't there at the time, but I imagine it must have been quite a shock for people used to seeing pages in uh, ten, less than 10 milliseconds. And still, we recovered from this. I'm confident we, could, uh, we can recover from it for 8.2. There was a point in your slides when the template system went from uh, squiggly brackets to like embedding PHP. Um, which everybody laughed at because it looks looks like uh, 
kind of going from Twig to PHP. Do you, do you understand? Do you know the background to why that change was made? And uh... I think there was. I'm not sure because I was not involved in in front at all at the time. But one thing I've heard from people working with X templates or Smarty, uh, which was mostly like it uh, functionality wise is how uh, this was part of the reason for being slow. Because at the time, the Smarty and X template would just load and perform uh, transformations based on regular expressions on the pages. And they had to do substitutions using the regex engine. So this means loading code into a completely uh, dynamic code which cannot be cached. And the Twig works completely differently from this. I think you're referring to this page. Yeah. Uh, because uh, Twig actually takes your code uh, with the braces, uh, the double braces actually, not simple, not simple ones like this. And it, uh, it uh, translates that to uh, class-based code in your generated code directory in sites default files PHP uh, Twig. Uh, and uh, this code translates all your, the inter it replaces all the interpolations by, uh, by building the code that mark up directly in PHP. So uh, this is the reason why Twig, although it first uh, frightened many people, is actually quite good and can be as fast or faster than uh, the PHP templates. And just on that, um, you know, at Drupal 4, the people implementing Drupal were still largely developers. So when PHP template came along, um, the power of it, um, it was just so popular that people never ever, uh, you could still use Smarty at the time oh. when it came along and people just didn't use it. So, Thanks for having the information. Okay, I think we are done and thank you for having attending and the interesting questions. Don't forget to rate the session on the site as always. Thank you.